This is going to wind up pissing some people off, but I wanted to talk a little bit about some of my issues with some open source developers. Uh, and some of my issues with just sort of open source development. Now, in the recent video I did, you can, it explains pretty... Not, not into an insane amount of detail, but I definitely explain that I do like open source. Uh, maybe not for the reasons why some other people do, but I do like it. In fact, I do most of my development as open source, under very liberal licensing. I am not anti-source by any means. This is uh, anti-open source by any means. Uh, this is rather just a rant, I guess, about the way some people act about open source. Uh, especially a lot of the devs. Now, I, I guess just the, the kind of other stuff that I do really taught me that you have to see something through to completion. And that complete means completely ready to go. The customer doesn't need to do shit. So that is... From making up, say, clothes or furniture, there's nothing they need to do. It doesn't even need to be packaged by them. Even the packaging is already done. I cannot say this about a lot of open source products. Well, they'll say, hey, it's, uh, you know, we, we made the release, but they don't have it packaged or anything like that. Uh, you know, they can even have several releases, but there's no chocolatey packages, no Windows MSIs, no, uh, packaging for any of the Unix or Linux systems. They just like, yeah, it's good. Or it's packaged only for a very specific technology that only a subset of people can use without necessarily having a hard dependency on that. By this, I mean like sort of the recent trend of packaging for Docker and then saying, hey, it's good. Well, what if I don't use Docker? What if I can't use Docker? You know, my personal machine, I can absolutely install Docker, but what about for those of us who are, say, working for businesses where you have a manager that decides these things, and sometimes you've already invested in another technology and can't switch. Sometimes your manager doesn't understand why you want to switch. Sometimes, regardless of what you think, your manager doesn't agree with the reasons for switching. Whether the manager is right or wrong is not really what I want to discuss here, but just sometimes these things are completely outside of your control. And if it's only packaged for one specific technology, you're fucked. You can't use it. Which then means that dev, their product isn't getting used by as many people as it could be. And that's just half-assing it, in my opinion. When I say something is released, it's completely good to go on way more than just one platform. Uh, technically speaking, the Editools project is actually good to go on Linux. I haven't tested it exhaustively yet, but it does build and package libraries. I would need to write a quick installer. That's not actually hard to do, but it's uh, it's basically good to go. I could say, hey, it's released, but it's not uh, packaged up for common distros yet. See what it should have, in my opinion, so that people can actually use it is the Debian uh, package format, uh, you know, dot D, DB or DP, D, DPKG or whatever, whatever the hell that extension is, but the, you know, the Debian package format, as well as the RPM. And 
I believe these are slightly incompatible, but the uh, Seuss and Red Hat, I think they use slightly incompatible RPMs or something. Uh, it's been a while since I've used either of those systems. I think they're too crufty. But, uh, in a similar vein, Ubuntu's Debs are actually different than Debian's. And obviously, with Ubuntu and Mint uh, being easily some of the more popular Linux distros, you'd want a package for those. And also, uh, Arch Linux, since that's sort of my baby when it comes to Linux systems. That's the one I regularly use and principally develop for, because I'm not actually anti-Linux, guys. I just don't think it's perfect. Uh, but, you know, with that in mind, I, I do also develop for Windows. I mean, hell, I develop on Windows. I probably use Windows more than anything else. I like Windows. And, uh... I'm gonna go with chocolatey packages for that one. Because... Chocolatey is basically integrated into Windows now. I mean, not not exactly. Uh, it's that one get is integrated into Windows now. And that you can install the chocolatey provider from one get. And it's all pretty pretty simple thing to do. Once you have chocolatey installed, you're good. and can install anything from chocolatey using one get. Uh, this all... I know to some of you, probably sounds like an insane amount of work. It's like a day, and you can get all these packaged. That's it. It's really not that bad. And uh, once you've got all the packages uh, done, anytime you do an update, it's like five minutes to go through and uh, change the version numbers and any other little thing. And that's it. Hell, uh... There's even tools for helping you do this, helping you manage a large number of packages all at once. See, I'd rather use something like that, the actual, like, system installers, system package managers, than uh, have them use something else like Flatpak, which requires them to install yet another package manager on their system. And that's... Uh, it's ugly to me. That's like a... Just, unnecessary cruft again. Um, in a similar vein, using Docker or similar things as just another package manager <laughs> is just an insane amount of cruft. Now, if you have an actual reason to use the container, uh, some kind of isolation that actually needs to happen, then that's a good thing to to, to use. You know, containers do have their purposes, but I see them used a lot as just like a, hey, I can package this for everything. It's not quite packaging. I mean, I, I get what you think you're doing, but you're sort of wrapping up a whole little Linux environment in that. And there's a lot more going on than just packaging your tool. And, uh... Containers only work on certain things, too. You want to hit up older Windows systems because, you know, businesses haven't all migrated to newer versions of Windows, then they all lose out. And that's potential money if you're actually dealing with a commercial product. Should they all migrate to the newer versions of Windows? Probably. But easier said than done. And, uh, I think at this point we're basically beating a dead horse when it comes to the, the packaging stuff. But there's a bit more than that, too, in that they don't really document. A lot of open source projects don't really document anything. And if you're just doing tooling for other people to use, then... It's not super important to actually document. I still suggest you do, but it's not as important. Whereas, if you're doing, say, libraries, like I often do, you really need to document. 
like really need to document your code. Uh, it's very hard to use other people's libraries when things aren't documented. And uh, yeah. starting to get the skeeters. So yet another thing that drives me batty about open source devs is when you file a bug report on certain projects, uh, they'll tell you to go fix it. Let's put that into some perspective. I buy, say, a drill press from... I don't know, the company doesn't really matter. But I go buy a drill press. It fails after a month. Way quicker than any drill press should ever fail. So I take it back to them. Be like, hey, uh... I, I think this might be a defective unit. I'm, uh, motor has gotten really weak. Stuff like that. And they go... So fix it. Then let us know how you fixed it. In what world is that okay customer service? Come on. Uh, before anybody thinks that, oh, well, I'm, I'm just going to do that myself, I actually have, here on GitHub, a uh, example of when somebody has filed a bug report, something that would be very easy for them to fix, and I fix it, because accountability. It's my product. Somebody else wants to fix something for me, or add a feature for me then much appreciated, seriously. That's part of the reason why I open source these, but it's my work. You know, have some fucking pride in your work and actually fix the thing. But another very closely related thing is when they want detailed steps for reproducing the error. And we'll use that same analogy again. I buy a drill press from another company. It fails within a month. And I take it back to them. Explain that, you know, hey, this the motor seems really weak and it's not drilling like it should be. I think this might be defective. And they go, uh, well, we need to know exactly what you were doing for when it got weak. Seriously? Never heard anything like that asked anywhere outside of software. Now, I will say that as many details as possible help find the issue. But I'm not talking about that. I am talking about people, and this even applies to some businesses that develop software, where they absolutely will not even attempt to solve the problem unless you can give them a detailed report that pretty much pins down exactly what to fix for them. Now, before anybody can say similar shit to me on this one, I actually have uh, a whole framework I've developed for uh, chatbots. For... Uh, now, something pretty similar to Twitch. Not for Twitch, but that, that idea. I figure that's what people are probably going to know. And, uh, yeah, for, for writing chatbots, basically. And, obviously, these finished bots, they're going to have problems. Uh, any new one, the person it's written for is going to have certain customizations that are going to clash and, uh, you know, you're always going to need fixes. But it's not like I'm sitting there for every single show and you can see the problems. It's not like uh, these people are very technically inclined, because otherwise, 
they'd be writing it. That's something I think people need to keep in mind. People using your products are often not technically inclined enough to generate the bug reports at the depth you guys want. And uh, I'm often just told about problems like, hey, this thing didn't work. Or, hey, this thing was slow. You think people would use my shit if all I told them was, uh, oh, hey, uh, I need to know exactly what was wrong and the exact steps necessary to reproduce it, or I'm not fixing this for you. No, that makes you sound both pretentious and lazy at the same fucking time. Again, have some fucking pride in your work. I've had this kind of shit happen with <coughs> timing issues or uh, things just completely breaking, uh, giving wrong results, all sorts of things. And like I had mentioned, I really only tend to find out about it by like, oh, hey, this thing didn't work or this thing wasn't showing up or, you know, I tried to do this thing, but it didn't seem to do anything. And I find the bugs every time. Every fucking time. No detailed bug report. Just uh, tinkering around with trying to reproduce it. Sometimes you have to ask him a few questions. But that really just helps you narrow it down. You know, if somebody tells you, hey, this thing is slow. Well... Is it slow by a consistent amount? Is it getting slower as the show goes on? Is it uh, randomly slow? You know, sometimes just takes a third of a second, sometimes takes five seconds. How slow are we talking about? You know, all sorts of things. You know, what was going on with your show? What, you have an insane amount of viewers talking or whatever. You know, those questions help a bit, but they're very far from detailed bug reports. But I always get the bug fixed. And uh, it, I find it absolutely appalling. The large number of open source devs and the... It's a smaller number of commercial devs. Holy shit, get out of here. That act this way. That if you are not willing to give them full information about what the actual problem is. You know, basically detailing <laughs> exactly how to fix it for them. They won't even bother. Some fucking pride in your work, people. <laughs> <laughs>